Hi, you're watching the YouTube channel of India's first weekly environmental newspaper, Enviro Annotations. Here are the headlines from the 5th April 2023 issue and also some other highlights. 5,873 out of 11,956 sanctioned posts are lying vacant in the State Pollution Control Boards and the Union Territory Pollution Control Committees, 193 in CPCB. On the 3rd April 2023, a question was raised in the Lok Sabha regarding the vacant positions at the centre and state levels of the pollution control bodies. In response, the Minister of State in the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Ashwini Kumar Chaube, stated that the availability of adequate manpower is crucial for the effective discharge of the institution's functions and duties. The minister's reply revealed that there are currently 193 vacant posts in the Central Pollution Control Board out of the sanctioned 577 posts. The CPCB has published advertisements to fill up various vacant posts through direct recruitment and the advertisement they placed in the employment news dated 24th to 30th December 2022. As per the information, 5454 posts are vacant out of the sanctioned strength of 11,103 in 28 state pollution control boards and 419 posts are vacant out of the sanctioned strength of 853 in 8 union territories. It is the responsibility of the concerned state governments and union territory and administrations to fill up these vacancies. Arunachal Pradesh and Nagaland are the only states running at full capacity, while Madhya Pradesh has the highest number of vacant posts with 781. 781 out of 1228 are lying vacant, followed by Rajasthan, where 537 are vacant out of the section strength of 11 and 40. Among the UTPCCs, Delhi and Jammu and Kashmir have the highest number of vacant posts with both having 192 vacant seats, vacant posts out of the 344 sanctioned for Delhi and 437 for Jammu and Kashmir. It is noteworthy that National Green Tribunal on 28th August 2019 issued directions in the matter of OA number 95 of 2018, instructing all the chief secretaries of the states and union territories to fill up the vacant positions in SPCBs and UTPCCs within a period of four months. NGT finds Chhattisgarh failing to process 1,115 ton per day of solid waste and 421.4 million litre per day of sebaceous. The National Green Tribunal Principal Bench, while deliberating on the original application number 627 of 2022 filed by Prakash Yadav against the state of Haryana, expressed grave concern that more than three months have elapsed since the Joint Committee report was submitted on 20th December 2022, yet appropriate remedial measures have not been taken. The bench comprising Justice Arun Kumar Tyagi, Judicial Member and Dr. Afroz Ahmad, expert member, observed during the hearing on 29th March 2023 that the replies submitted by the government bodies were inadequate and appeared to be an attempt to justify their inaction and disregard the environmental violations. NGT directs personal appearance of the principal secretaries of Haryana Irrigation and Public Health Departments on the next hearing date scheduled on 24th April 2023. License under food safety regulations must for well owners, water sellers, as per Kerala High Court judgment. Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change scraps the single-member NGT bench proviso in a rule change. However, on 31st January 2018, the Supreme Court directed that no single-judge bench be constituted to hear and decide matters in the NGT. The editorial article titled Global Reduction in Gas Flaring talks about the World Bank's Global Gas Flaring Tracker Report GZFR, based on new satellite data, 
global gas flaring decreased by 3% from 144 billion cubic meter in 2021 to 139 BCM in 2022. Hazardous Wastes Conundrum in India deliberates on various data and issues pertaining to hazardous waste management. We have a separate video on this. A link is shared in the description. In Q&A, Sandeep Chachra, Executive Director Action Aid Association, spoke to Sanjay Kumar Mishra, myself, on climate issues, climate actions and climate justice. Study of the Indian Institute of Remote Sensing, IIRS, claims landslide not linked to hydropower project activities. Government reports 3.15% electricity generation from nuclear in financial year 2021-22. Indian nuclear power reactors produced 47,112 million units of electricity during 2021-22. Jal Jivan mission achieves 60% coverage, however, they have to focus on water wastes. International Finance Corporation, IFC, to halt clients' funding to new coal projects, campaign is welcome. Delhi Chief Minister deliberates on options to defuse water crisis. Delhi gearing up to further slash summer air pollution levels. Despite last three fiscal growth trend, CAMPA funds remain unspent. Total utilization of CAMPA funds during 2021-22 was reported to be 5,776.44 crore in 33 states. Dr. Priyanka Bharadwaj's series of portraying the vanishing Aravali ranges continues. Symphony Environmental India offers revolutionary solution to make plastics biodegradable. Product meets OECD ecotoxicity requirements, claims the company. CPCB revises guidelines for handling and scrapping the end-of-life vehicles, ELVs. CPCB in the year 2016 prepared guidelines for the environmentally sound management of ELVs in India, which was further revised in 2019 as the guidelines for environmentally sound facilities for handling, processing and recycling of the ELVs, as per the directions of the National Green Tribunal, Principal Bench, New Delhi, in the matter of OA number 996 of 2018. The latest guidelines are aligned with the Motor Vehicles Registration and Functions Vehicle Scrapping Facility Rules 2021, notified by MORTH, the Steel Scrap Recycling Policy of the Ministry of Steel issued in 2019 and Automobile Industry Standards for Collection and Dismantling of ELVs 2021. As per the document, it has been estimated that passenger cars contain about 70% of steel, 7 to 8% of aluminium, the rest 20-25% is plastic, rubber and glass, etc., which are also recyclable. Recycling 1 ton of steel conserves, 1134 kg of iron ore, 635 kg of coal and 54.4 kg of limestone. However, there is no clear mentioning of environmental footprints from the recycling process or by saving iron ore or coal or limestone mining as well as processing. MOFCC Expert Committee for Industry 1 decides on projects with glaring confusions past litigations and groundwater over-reliance. There is a separate video on this. A link is shared in the description. EAC for Industry 2 sector projects calls for NABT assessment of Hubert Enviro Care Systems environmental monitoring and modeling training needs. And at the last but not the least, New York Times reports more than 1,500 bison in Yellowstone National Park were killed to prevent the spread of disease to livestock. An unusually harsh winter that buried Yellowstone National Park under a heavy blanket of snow and ice this year pushed a large portion of the park's bison herd down to lower elevations and out of the park in search of milder climbs and food. Officials said they had no choice but to approve the lengthy killing of the roughly 6,000 member herd as the animals 
instinctually cross the park boundary onto other public land. It is part of a strategy to prevent them from getting near livestock because some 60% of the bison head carries a disease, brucellosis, that could infect cattle and cause cows to abort their calves.